Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes? Oh, excellent. First of all, I would like to thank Community Action and Gareth and May for inviting me to have this platform. And also, the chair. It was interesting to hear from the chair, Gareth and May, you know, among many things that is said. And one thing that I picked up very much is about today. And if I could reinforce those words that Gary spoke, it is about learning and sharing. Thank you very much, Gary, for bringing that up. It is about learning and sharing. It is about Minton Kings and how we live together in creating community cohesion. We, we each organization have a place to play a part and make this enriching uh, city. And let's be a benchmark to other cities as well. Milton Keynes is not only about roundabouts and stone clouds. There are more wonderful things happening as well. <coughs> and also, uh, Catherine, thank you for the wonderful uh, uh, presentation and in-depth knowledge about gender day intelligence. I've learned quite a lot already today. Moving on, what is Islamic art? A question. Uh, do anybody know what Islamic art is about? Excellent, there's no hands up, so... Geometry? Oh. <laughs> Apart from geometry, excellent. That's one of the things. <laughs> Storytelling? Storytelling, wonderful. There are many, as I will go through the slides and find a lot of common shared values that we'll be discussing about best practice that we've been uh, bringing across. Our strap line is building bridges between diverse communities. We just don't say it, we live it. We, we work on it 24-7. You have to be a bit. Uh, uh -huh. There we are. Islamic art. Islamic art is a type of art. It doesn't just represent the faith, but it is a style of art. It could be you know, a Chinese art, it could be an Indian art. There are many elements about Islamic art that uh, today what I intend to talk about and bring uh, to people's awareness. There are three categories of Islamic art. Uh, apart from calligraphy, uh, the chair of Kevin mentioned that uh, once upon a time we bumped into him in the shopping centre and it is very true that we are supported by the army not to engage in taking people to Afghanistan or to other different places, I can show you. But it's about culture, it's about understanding, it's about living together. Uh, the calligraphy, arabesque, geometry and also Garden design is part of Islamic art as well. One of the highest forms of Islamic art, which is calligraphy, which links back uh, to spirituality, and there is an interfaith uh, link to it as well. Uh, how it is uh, brought across, and the aspects has there, there are mathematics uh, aspects that people learn through it, and uh, science. I don't know how many of you have been to Spain, to Cordoba, or Tunisia for all of them. And if you've been there, I hope you had an opportunity to go to uh, Granada. The wonderful aspects of uh, Islamic art down there, and the, the architecture, it's been there for many, many centuries, and it's worthwhile having a glance or uh, an appointment to have a look at it. Right, Islamic in the calligraphy. As you can see, there are different forms of calligraphy that uh, we have to our work in Milton Keynes. And I have uh, workshops and uh, seminars that we've brought across. We've been going on since uh, eight years, uh, our organization. And as a chair and founder of our organization, our committee members are men from diverse community. All of our committee members are not Muslim, I can show you. They are from different faiths as well, and also different genders. So, in saying about uh, our strength, we actually do live and promote as we are. The term Islamic refers not only to, uh, to the religion, which is quite misunderstood frequently when we're applying for funding application. Oh, well, they're promoting you know, faith here. Well, we're not promoting faith. Let me reassure you, it is a style of art. That's what we're discussing here. Uh, but to reach very Islamic culture. That's what we, what our organization aims and objective is. And it is about education. Our organization is about education. 
And one of the partnership is uh, that we work very closely with Anchor College in many, many respects. We've had international artists uh, uh, also them here to our organization, the, the Chinese uh, calligraphy called Hanji Murray, which is part of the Anchor College. Uh, and in the, we have workshops at the Church of uh, Christ Connoisseur, in which we have more than 5,000 people attended over two weeks. So we do bring uh, many of the international artists here to use it. Calligraphy. There are many forms of calligraphy. Now these are buildings in Uzbekistan. I haven't traveled myself there, but I do dream one day to travel down there if visa restrictions have been removed. Uh, and, and these are century old buildings and what you see in this style of calligraphy and they're written from right to left. And they're all mathematically calculated. And this I'll come back to later on how we engage with people and everything. There we go, geometry design. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, somebody from the audience you know, put their hand up and said, Well, geometry design, what is geometric design? Geometric design, there are correlations between calligraphy, arabesque, and mass. Uh, we have three styles of working and three uh, strategies. One is to work with the healthcare sector in the schools. We've just finished a project <coughs> with uh, Walter High School doing uh, work down there with. Here, here are 11 students on Islamic art and maths and science together. So we've been working in schools as well. <coughs> but equally uh, in the communities as well. So geometric design and are central to Islamic art. It symbolizes <coughs> unity, which has the interfaith element to it. Or a thousand years ago, artists and in the Islamic world began to develop a system of constructing intricate geometric design. Again, that's the education about mathematics, algebra, how it is used and brought into schools as well. We do have those workshops and we discuss with the students. Uh, and the system of constructing intricate geometric art based on uh, radical systematic style like figures. So there are science elements that we bring across in education in schools. As centuries progress, uh, uh, the praise and practice into high art form. It is about quality of art. Uh, to an architectural surface with colorful systematic design, as you can see there, some of the examples. And uh, previous has mentioned in a massive piece in Alhambra Palace, you will find in Granada and Spain. Some of the other arabesque biomorphic design, which are to bring nature, the flowers, bring into tiles and then everything. So these are some of the things uh, decided that we've incorporated in our workshops, but also in seminars and in, in our festivals as well. If anybody wants to do some decorating, we're quite open to suggestions. We're quite happy to come into a garden mm -hmm. design. You know, so opportunities here. Right, Islamic art. Can I just ask a question to everybody here? What brings all faith together. What symbol brings all faith together? It's uh, not a red heavy question, not a tricky question, just an open question to all the audience. What symbol brings us together in terms of interfaith, with all faith and non faith together? Star. Star. What else? Cross. Cross. What else? To, we did a project and uh, we commissioned a, a survey and what all faith came together is similar. It is the tree. It is Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, the tree of life, uh, in Hinduism, Zoroastrian, all faith, not faith. There's one symbol that brings us all together, the tree of life. And the tree of life is no different than garden. In all faith and not faith, it does talk about gardens. And this is one of the areas that Alhambra has been demonstrating, or in Islamic art does talk about. It. Uh, as in, I'm not a religious person, but I just, uh, I just quote what he said from our research. As the Bible describes, is that he, uh, God, will wipe over all the tears from the eyes, uh, and shall be no more death, no sorrow, no cry, no pain. It's all there, the signs will be available. And what are we trying to do to Islamic art? That there is lots of correlation, there are lots of 
common values that we share. Somehow we do not, we are not very positive of discussing and bringing across. And if I can just go back to one of the slides that Catherine talked about, is having confidence. And this is about building confidence, and this about, is about the interfaith element within the Islamic art that brings across. Islamic architecture, uh, the Great Mosque of uh, Cordoba, there's another element of interfaith, uh, intercultural building, if people know us, the Spanish history. Cordoba and Sevilla, the church and mosque built together. And this is one of cohesion has worked for centuries. Multiculturalism is nothing new in, 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 in Europe or in this world. If you look in the various civilizations before us, there are great examples, and let's learn from that. And I'd like to quote you again, uh, Gavin, your words about learning and sharing again. It's so vital that we all take something away from this conference uh, in terms of learning and sharing. Uh, there are uh, Tunisia uh, on the right hand side, uh, we've got uh, Uzbekistan again on my right hand side, uh, Cordoba on the left, um, and Morocco on the left hand side, uh, the designs. This is one of the projects that we were very proud of, and they uh, exhibited the end result at the bank, which we did quilt, which to do with diverse, not only the Muslim community, but with interfaith communities, people from the project was called the Golden Thread. Uh, the ladies from uh, all faith took uh, part in it, and also from diverse Muslim community, from the Somalian mothers and daughters to from Yemen, uh, from Morocco, from the Asian community, and daughters. This were discussing about how the daughters who are born here or in Europe felt being British, and the mothers who are from the other part of the, the homeland, geographically speaking. And we looked, uh, we did an eight weeks course here, uh, working at the Church of Cornerstone again, that's what we did, and at the Yankee College. And uh, we're proud to say that we've had a lot of support uh, from the college, and we have a very good relationship. And this is how we've broken down many barriers through this. And among the topics that we've discussed about female circumcision as well, I don't mean to offend anybody, I will apologize if I do. And some of the things we've discussed through such projects, which were quite controversial. And the college has taken lead in this area by breaking down the barriers among many communities. As you can see, the Islamic art has played a huge impact in the community in terms of building relationships with all diverse communities. Uh, we've got uh, proof of the pudding is we've got pictures at the back uh, and the quilt and I'm quite happy to take questions later on. There, uh, as you can see, each mothers and daughters coming from different background, different faith background, different community, has something to share that reflected with their daughters. And that's the, the end result, you know, uh, from, from Yemen, from from, uh, from Poland, from, uh, uh, from Somalia as well, from Pakistan as well, but also being British as well. Right, the spiritual art, and this is another dimension of which uh, we're very proud and we keep uh, bringing this across. This is an aspect which is very close to our breaking barriers as well, which was uh, we had this uh, project a few years ago, two years ago at UCMK, and we had the Bishop of Buckingham who attended. Uh, it was very supportive of our work. And all the other places, and we had uh, Tom Bree who was doing uh, close work with the Anchor College, a uh, project that will be running out very soon. And uh, Fuad Nandi from uh, Radical Middle Way, which we worked together. And this highlighted there are a lot of, again, I keep emphasizing the common values that we have through many organizations, through many uh, faith and non-faith organizations and communities as well. And this brought many, many people, which over 200 people attended uh, this event at the University of Milton Keynes. And this talked about, about oneness, but also about what we share in the communities in Milton Keynes, what we are so that's what makes us so special about us living together here. 
organization we have engaged with and something that the chair discuss about and uh, Catherine about best practices. Well, I don't know if they say this best practice, but I will highlight some of the areas that we, and the organization that we've shared and we've engaged successfully. On the top is Lutikins College uh, with Dr. Julie Mills uh, and, and the team and uh, Anna uh, from the Quality and Diversity. We we'll keep on building a lot of educational program to break barriers. Followed by Community Action, Mosaic Arts Gateway, Community Foundation, NK Gallery, All Faith Organization, we're in touch with them, um, yeah, MK Quality Council, uh, Art and Heritage Alliance, Primary and Secondary Schools. Education is a huge aspect of our organization, it's part of our constitution. Uh, MK Hospital, uh, William Hospice, and the uh, Somali Women and other aspects. So those are the organizations that we've been engaged, have been engaging, and those, some of them, they, they share common aspects and values that what we stand for. How we engage with various communities. This is how it has been successful for us. Building relationships with people and organizations. Share common values, aims and objectives and beliefs. Listening to the issues that affect individuals and organization. It's not only about me and the organization, but how I'm engaging with the other organization. What it is about them that they are in difficulties. Let's work together, let's share. And I'm a great believer of what Gary said. I hadn't heard that before, but thank you Gary for putting that up. Learning and sharing. Uh, listening to the issues that affect individuals and organizations. We've been, uh, college and ourselves have been very, very successful in building that relationships and uh, foundation. Open dialogue. Let's have an honest, hard question dialogue. Remove this political correctness. You're our you're disabled, you're black, etc. Don't be behind the bush, please. You're not going to offend. You will just offend and take more time if you, you know, did it. Uh, just come to the point you want. We, you know, we have run up mature people. It is about education. So let's have an honest conversation. Ask them hard questions. Even if it offends you, but, you know, you clear the air and what the outcome will be. It will enrich both of us. It will enrich the dialogue. It will enrich and bring people together. Understanding the diverse cultures, I'm afraid we're still failing there with the last one. We haven't achieved by understanding the diverse culture. But the opportunity is hopefully that we should all, when we leave, that we'll have some relationships, we'll build something here and learn and share to move on from there. I still feel that we've got still work to be done, particularly understanding diverse cultures. It has appeared in uh, quite a few of us, or many organizations, it's become tick job. Let's remove that tick job thing and have a good open conversation. Learning experience, taking time out to reach out and being genuine. That is how it's worked for me and to the organization. Being flexible and approachable. Being willing to change and adapt to the circumstances is a huge important because each year we're not only influenced by global issues as well, but internal issues, local issues as well. But if we are able to build that bridge, and it's something that the past speaker talked about, about confidence. If we've got confidence enough and reach out to people and say, well, this is our minimum how can we move forward? What is it that I haven't done? Perhaps we could learn here. So, being willing to change and adapt to the circumstances is huge important for us. Come from a place of uh, honesty and integrity as well. We, we live our principles and values and communicate this. And I mean it sincerely. Of the work that we've been doing for eight years, and these are some of the things that we've achieved. Awards and recognition, National Academy Award for Partnership and Engaging Work with NK College, supported by Arts Council. We are the only organization, Muslim organization, national at war, and also locally as well, which I must thank David Brooke, who was the mayor at the time, 
who spoke at the cabinet, and we were very thankful to them for that. I share this award for uh, bringing Islamic arts to the wider community uh, and also educating people. Enlightenment and Education Award for Community Work by Muslim Council of Britain. Innovation, uh, inviting to talk about our work at 10 Downing Street. This was for a few days ago, where I met uh, the Prime Minister's wife. Now she's in, in the States having a different type of food than the food that I serve. <laughs> An opportunity to go to the Ten Downing Street. <coughs> I'm quite chuffed to be British and to grow and to be recognised that what Islamic art has achieved in Milton Keynes and continues to do so and working in partnership. We're quite open with all organisations and one of them helped to work with Tom and Anna with the orchestra group to do something new. We will be holding a, a quite a few events, one of them with the college in Milton Hall but also Arts and Cultural Festival in, on 25 and uh, 26 of August. So these are our achievement, and it's taken in the world by working very hard. And finally, thank you for being patient.